Now, as China has created massive chaos, not only in the stock markets, commodity markets, but with entire economies, the way this is going to shake out, by manipulating the currency, we have a government that is using executive orders to essentially shut down our economy. We're going to be talking to Craig Richardson of Energy and Environmental Legal about the EPA's massive power grab, not just coming after the air and the water, but also coming after everything that they can get. They're coming after energy as well. Now, joining us now is Gerald Salenti. Gerald is a trends forecaster since the 1980s. He's been accurately teaching people how to survive, how to prepare, and how to prevail. His organization is Trends Research Institute. You can find that at trendsresearch.com. He publishes Trends Journal as well. Joining us now is Gerald Salenti. Of course, the markets were amazed to see what China had done, but Gerald wasn't. We talked back in the turn of the year as to what he thought would happen. I remember, Gerald, you holding up newspapers and saying, look at what they're not showing in the Wall Street papers and the U.S. papers, but look at what they're showing in China, a massively overvalued real estate market at the time. And, of course, this move in currency is trying to pump some life into the market that the central controllers haven't been able to do in China. Yes, and it's not going to work. The big fiction out there is that when currencies devalue, then you can sell your products overseas for more money. What they're not putting together is the reason is people have no money to buy these products and you have an oversupply of commodities. That's why you see all these commodities crashing. So what happened last week? China announced its uh, exports were down over 8%, and they've been down all year long. So now they're devaluing their currency, hoping that they could export more. Will they? A little bit. But that's not going to solve the problem, because you have commodities crashing around the world. You look at the Bloomberg Commodity Index, David, it's back down to 2002 levels. Mm. Let's go back to 2002. The criminal in chief, the guy that started the war in Iraq, yeah, uh, weapons of mass destruction and ties to Al Qaeda, people forget this. His popularity rating was crashing just days before 9 11. You can look it up. Yeah. He just got elected several months earlier. We were in a recession. After 9-11, go to Disneyland, go buy stuff, boost the economy, 46-year low interest rates. Okay, go back to that low level. That's where commodity prices are because there's a global slowdown. Now, China absorbs some 50%, for example, of the raw materials such as coal, iron ore, copper. You look at iron ore prices, you go back to 2011, it was $191 a metric ton. Now it's floating around at 50 bucks. Mm -hmm. Copper at six year lows, one after another. So what they're doing in China, and, and their imports are down as well, so that people in China aren't buying more. So now what they're trying to do with lowering their interest rate, their, their yuan value, is to export more. Now, you read all of the headlines from yesterday's newspapers. Surprise, it was a surprise, it was a surprise. It was no surprise. Go back to our trends in the news. We put the video clip there of from July 27th. I said, I read what they were saying, and I said, you know what they're really saying? They're saying that they're going to devalue their currency to boost their economy, it's right here and no one's paying attention to it. But it came out, it's a big surprise. And I even said on our <laughs> Trends in the News broadcast, how do you say capisce in Chinese? <laughs> you understand? You know, that's what it means in Italian. That's so right. we saw this coming. Now there's another level going on. Look, it's not only the Chinese now that have devalued their yuan, you're looking at all the devaluations of currencies around the world. Up here in Canada, not too far from us, you have the loony down to 2,004 levels. Why? They can't sell their oil, <coughs> their tar sands. So what does that mean? How about go to Brazil? Rich in natural resources. 
They're not selling stuff either. Their real is down to what? 13, 16 year lows, depending what day it is. Let's put this together. Suppose you had Brazilian reals or Canadian dollars, and gold is priced in US dollars, and you're watching your currency decline. You wish you had gold, and no one's talking about that. Gold today is up, what, about 15 bucks? And you guys know me for a long time. I've always said I was not buying gold because of inflationary fears, but currency devaluation realities. Exactly. Reality hang on, hang on, Gerald. We've got to go to a commercial break. We're going to be right back with Gerald Slenty. I want to talk to you about deflation and the possibility of depression. And, of course, we're also going to talk about what follows, and that's war. We'll be right back. back. And, of course, we've been talking to Gerald Salenti of TrendsResearch.com. Just before we went to the break, he was telling us why gold is going up, and we've seen all these other commodities dropping. But, of course, another component, one of the things that we want to talk to Gerald about is as the economy tanks, as things get worse, there's always, of course, the out that the government leaves itself of war. Gerald is addressing that as well. He's got an Occupy Peace organization. They're going to start with their first uh, meeting this fall. So we want to talk to him and get the details about that because that's where this is ultimately heading, isn't it, Gerald? Yes. You know what I always say, and you're seeing it now, you have a currency war going on. Currency wars, and why are they lowering their currencies? As I said earlier, because they want to do more trade. Currency wars, trade wars, World wars. All you have to do is go back yeah. to World War II. You exactly. Know, it's very clear. And, and in looking at the commodities and the currencies, let's put it together. Again, we just put out a trend alert today. And we said about, it was no surprise about the Chinese devaluation. And a new surprise is coming. And the new surprise, David, is get ready for a global equities meltdown. You look what happened in the markets. They were way down today. Right at the end, man, they pop them back up. Look what happened when gold went down several weeks ago. It began in China. Yeah, you know, the ones that are rigging the Shanghai index, or they rag, rigged the Shanghai gold index, gold uh, fund too. And here's what they did. Every day, they trade maybe about on the exchange, the gold exchange in China, about 16 tons a day. All of a sudden, the Japanese market was closed that day, so that was the only major Asian market open. Within two minutes, they dumped 33 tons of gold on the market. I'm not <laughs> making this up. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a fact. The governments are doing everything they can to keep this phony Ponzi scheme going by pumping in cheap dough shorting gold and trying to make it look like their currencies are worth more than the digital paper they're not printed on. <laughs> so we're looking at, as we state in this and we lay out all the facts, you have a currency crisis and you have commodities plunging. How could anybody not see this? So they're coming out with this story now, oh, we have to get some inflation. What are you talking about? The reason they got deflation is because prices are going down because there's more supply than demand. The jobs stink. You know the numbers. You guys write them. I go to your site. What, the, what, was, the, what was the wages last month they came in? Oh, they went up at 0.2%, the yeah. lowest number since they started recording this stuff. And it's not only here. You have it. Again, when your commodities are crashing in resource-rich countries, the people are out of work. It's, it's, so what they're leading us to, again, currency wars, you're hearing little Chucky Schumer all of a sudden shooting off his fat little mouth over here in New York about how we got to do something about the Chinese devaluing their currency, and this isn't the way you do things. Who are these people, these hypocrites, that come up with BS-like too big to fail. You little son of a gun. How about quantitative easing, Charlie, that you gave all the big companies this cheap dough to do mergers and acquisitions that are now at levels 
historic highs reaching levels beyond 2007, Charlie, and you're yelling about the Chinese? Charlie, oh, I forgot to cheat though that you can now buy back stocks from these big companies so they boost their stocks and the big cats make more dough, Charlie. So now they're yelling at China. So this is what you're seeing coming together here. Currency wars, trade wars, world wars. And that's why we're launching OccupyPeace.us is the website. Because if we don't fight for war, these psychopaths are going to have us die in war. And I don't want to die for war. Absolutely. Let me, before we go to, to uh, the Occupy uh, piece, I, when you were talking about uh, the trade issues, I'm concerned that with the Trans-Pacific Partnership, Transatlantic Partnership hanging over our heads, we've already had the fast track authorization put through. And of course, one of the ways that they were trying to run this through was to use China as the foil over here to say that we have to run these quote unquote trade deals. And you and I know that this goes far beyond free trade. We can have a discussion about what free trade should be. This is a secret agreement that's being negotiated by these corporate lobbyists. And once they get this run through, as we've been told by Senator Sessions, they'll be able to add China or any country that they want to after the fact. They'll be able to change the agreement as they wish without any input from any of the nations that signed up on it. What's your take on this, uh, Gerald? Do you think that this is something that they will use as leverage to try to ram these things through, scaring the people about how we have to group together to counter China? That's a wonderful, wonderful observation. First one I heard on that. Uh, and, and thinking about it, you're exactly right. What they're going to do now is demonize China for devaluing their yuan, blaming the declining U.S. exports because I mean, what do we export anymore? When you have a global slowdown and you see what's going on with the oil companies, Caterpillar, and there are other stocks like that that need boosting economies to export their product, they're going to blame the slowdown in exports on China. And that's the reason why, Mr. Knight, we have to pass the Trans-Pacific Partnership because it's in the best interest of the American people and we're going to bring jobs back to America, folks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're going to give monopolies to the corporations that are negotiating this agreement. That's what we're going to do. We're going to lose our sovereignty, as Senator Sessions has pointed out, to a transnational governing committee that will be able to rewrite this deal as they see fit. Now, I want to go to the Occupy uh, Peace uh, movement that you're starting here, OccupyPeace.us. I saw this article, Gerald, uh, from on Motherboard. A former drone pilot's guilt kept him awake at night. He says, I feel like it destroyed my so soul. I stopped sleeping because I started dreaming about my job. I couldn't escape it. When I spoke to people about my experiences, he said, I had people who called me a traitor, telling me I should eat a bullet. This is where this is headed. Of course, this was something that they said would not leave the kind of psychic scars on drone pilots that we had seen on jet pilots, on bomber pilots, on soldiers on the ground. And yet they do because they understand what's behind oh. this. And of course, this is the ultimate end game when all of their economic leverages uh, fail, or I should say when they come to fruition, then they pull the uh, war game on us, don't they? As so I said, currency wars, trade wars, world wars. All yeah. you have to look at is World War II. We're holding occupied peace at the most historic four corners in the United States. The only place where there's a pre-revolutionary war stone building on each corner. The seeds of democracy were sown here. And we're honoring thy founding fathers by bringing home the troops. No foreign entanglements. Madison, Adams, Franklin, George Washington, a real warrior's farewell address. No foreign entanglements. The world was at war back then. Bring home all the troops close the bases, protect the homeland, and put the troops to work to rebuild our rotted infrastructure and force Congress, as per the Constitution, to vote to go to war. And one other caveat, referendums on each state ballot that we, the people, will tell our senators and congressmen how to vote because they're just paid off. And we're the ones that pay for the war with our money and our lives. Absolutely. That's a great movement. I certainly wish you uh, the best of luck. Again, that's OccupyPeace.us to find information about that. That's going to be September 20th, 2015.
A rally kicks it off in Kingston, New York. And Gerald, I certainly hope you can pull this off because you know exactly what we need. You see the trends coming. I see the trends uh, as far as this political aspect goes. We can see what's going to happen if we don't turn this around. Very, very important for us to do that. Keep up with Gerald Salenti at trendsresearch.com. Thank you so much, Gerald. Thank you, David.